Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at this little guy here on the end of that wire. And this is the iRange X BM01 and this helps us when we're binding Spectrum Satellite or other receivers like you see here. These are all uh, DSM2 or DSM-X. Uh, you know probably that I run a Devo 10 which has a 4-in-1 module in it but the Devo 10 with deviation firmware on it will allow us to do Spectrum Protocol natively. We don't even need the 4-in-1 module. So I do fly these. I also use FRSky and FlySky. Um, so we have a bunch of different protocols that I can use with this radio. But this particular one can be kind of troublesome sometimes because we have some special commands that we have to do in Betaflight in order to get this into binding mode. And that's where this guy comes in. This simplifies the process of sending it into binding mode. We're usually looking for a quick flash. Now before we get to that, I should also draw your attention to the fact that you'll see I haven't used one pin here and I also have the socket that I can use there. So if you have a connector like this, it will plug in natively right there. You don't have to get your iron out or even make it hot, which might be exactly what you're looking for. Uh, but this one also has 5 volt out right there. So if you're not doing a spectrum satellite that requires 3.3 volt, like the one I have here, so if you have a larger spectrum receiver, that runs off 5 volts, you can just run your voltage wire right there. So without that, let's go ahead and let me move a few things out of the way. Try to bring this into our shot here. Wake it up a bit. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to grab my USB cable. And this button here, we don't even have to use that. Watch. There's our binding mode. I'm going to set this down, I'm going to press enter on my bind, you can see this flashing and this will flash as well. Now it's solid on and we're bound. Now if you plug it back in again it'll go right back into binding mode. But the next component is how do we connect it to our flight controller. Well that's going to vary depending upon what flight controller you have. Now I have a couple old flight controllers sitting out here and I didn't bring out any of my micros because they're so small you probably couldn't see anything on the screen anyways. But this is an old Flip32 that I've had for a long time. I think this is a deluxe because it has the beeper on it. But it comes with a spectrum port so if I had something like this I could just plug it right in and then I could set my UARTs and I'm all good, good to go. Other boards, like this is an F32, it has, it says UART1, UART2, and then it says UART3 over here. So I've soldered this up to what should be UART3. You can see I've got my ground here. I've got my 3.3 volt down here. It's marked. It's a little bit hard to see down there, but you can see the 0.3 and V down there. And then our RX. But before we plug in our freshly bound spectrum, we need to make sure we have the board where it won't auto reset our spectrum satellites. Because a lot of times you'll get a board that has auto reset on and then as soon as you plug it in, it will just go into binding mode again. So you have to take it back out or it won't be set at all and the receiver will lose the bind possibly. So let's take a look at the board. We'll do some quick setup. I'll show you how I guess my way through things sometimes too. Okay, you can see I've got COM4 up there on the screen and I've got my flight controller plugged in, but I don't have my spectrum plugged into my flight controller just yet. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the CLI. And the thing that I wanna look at is what does the dump say? And you could probably get to this faster in some other way, but I just tend to do things the hard way and just scroll through. We're looking for the spectrum satellite bind auto reset see where this is on so it would have lost the bind if I'd plugged my satellite in and connected it to beta flight because of this setting so we need to change that on our board first thing and we just type that command make sure that you're not getting any autocorrect spectrum is spelled with just a K it's not CK or anything else So we set that to off. Let's go, what else do we have? Well, there was one entry right above there I wanted to take a look at. I should have drawn our attention to it. And also spectrum satellite bind zero. So that means it won't send it into binding mode. So now we should be able to save. That reboots our flight controller. We're back into our flight controller, and you can see my board is 
all over the place. So I'm going to disconnect my USB cable and I'm going to plug in my flight, my uh, my Spectrum satellite. Connect again. So we take a look at our ports tab. So you would have thought it says UART2 or on our slider, and that's typically you'll find it, it, it really varies depending upon what board you have. You might find a UART on, you might not find a UART at all. You might have entries in here that aren't UART, don't touch those, it's probably for your USB. But typically, you want a, a UART to be on, and in this case, we're connected to UART 2, and that slider is on. If it weren't on, I would need to click it to turn it on, and then I'd have to click save and reboot, it would bring us back into beta flight. We also need to go into configuration. We're going to scroll down here, we're going to go to receiver and typically it's we're using serial based receivers anymore even if you're not using a spectrum satellite you're using uh, FR sky or fly sky we're typically using a serial based receiver in my case I'm gonna select 2048 uh, if you're running this is an aside from this video but you would also choose S bus if you're running something like the FR sky XM or XM plus uh, there's also I bus that's for other receivers as well typically those are running 5 volt though so with this we should be able to just save and reboot alright it brought us right back in let's go over to the receiver oh no it doesn't work well let's go back up to ports let's turn off UART 2 let's do UART 3 this time brought us back it's already rebooted as we can see up here let's go back into the receiver oh that looks different oh there we go so now I got throttle and I got yaw the next bit would be to set the channel map and that's gonna vary depending upon your radio I typically use the uh, TAER but your radio may differ you may you may need the default which is AETR and that just has to do with your channels for your throttle and rudder and pitch and roll those are numbered in that particular direction so you can see we've even got switches working too. So if binding is putting you into bind, I do suggest that you can pick up one of these and then you can be assured that you've got your receiver bound to your remote. Now we just have to figure out beta flight and the flight controller and hopefully some of the steps I've gone through in this video can help you get your quad in the air. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions or otherwise, please leave those in the section down below. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.